Hello again, everybody, and welcome back. We've been talking about how um, rotational kinematics is very analogous to um, one-dimensional kin um, kinematics. And uh, one thing that is very closely tied uh, to both of them is the element of time. But um, with things that are moving in a circle, that is, in a, you know, a circular pattern, um, a time, an you might say a length of time, comes down to the amount of time it takes for an object to go around one time. That's a very, um, I say that's a very natural length of time to be measuring for things that are rotating because they, they rotate and then that cycle repeats and uh, goes over and over again. So that amount of time that it takes <clears throat> for an object to rotate once, we call that the period. Um, it's still called T, capital T, <clears throat> um, but a, the, a period is um, the amount of time it takes for a repeating process to go over and over and over again, very much like a circle. So the amount of time it takes for um, an object on the edge of a circle to rotate once, we would call it its period. So we measure in seconds, um, and of course we know that our, uh, our distance around the edge of the circle that is, uh, the amount of displacement, you might say the angular displacement, um, as indicated by delta theta right here, is 2 pi. Well, 2 pi what? Well, it's 2 pi radians, remember? So here, whoops, here's our radius right there. And then around the edge, it's 2 pi of that. And recall that a radius uh, varies depending on what size the circle is. But that's why we measure them in radians. So it's 2 pi radians. Uh, around the edge of that circle. That's, you might say that's like the distance uh, or the displacement, you might say delta x, remember that from kinematics? And of course, t is time, and if, if our angular velocity, or you might say our average angular velocity is uh, angular displacement over the amount of time, then we would say that time is gonna be our angular displacement, and this a whole revolution, two pi radians, divided by our angular velocity, omega right there. So before we would say, well, time would be delta x over velocity. Well, this is the, the rotational analog to that. Our displacement around the edge of the circle is two pi radians around the edge. Divide that by our angular velocity, the number of um, radians per second, and then we have the amount of seconds it takes to go two pi radians around the edge of that circle. All right, so an example. Example 10.3. We want to find the period of a record that is rotating <coughs> at 45 RPM. All right, 45 revolutions per minute. So let's just go ahead and, um, uh, and write down 45 RPM. <coughs> so we're starting with that. And this is really, again, just sort of a um, uh, unit vector problem. RPM, of course, means revolutions per minute. All right, and we want to turn that into uh, a certain amount of time. Okay, well that 45 revolutions per minute, that's an angular velocity. But what we want to do, instead of having it be in revolutions per minute, we want to turn that into what? Well, we'll turn it into radians per second, right? Radians per second, and then we can take that and turn that into a certain amount of time. So let's convert revolutions per minute to radians per second. Well, one revolution equals two pi radians, okay, um, and uh, so therefore revolution goes away. So we have radians, and the minutes, of course, gets converted to seconds. So one minute equals 60 seconds. And then we'll have our omega. That's a pretty lousy omega. Let's try that again. Looks more like a W, but a little bit better than before. All right, so let's just find our angular velocity now in, uh, what is it, radians per second. So minute goes away. What do we get? I get that our angular velocity is going to be 4.71, uh, no, just 4.7. Try to stay true to sig, sig figs here, 7 uh, radians per second. That is our angular velocity, our omega. We originally had it in revolutions per minute, but we want to convert that into radians per second. Okay, well, we want to find the time. And the time comes from having an angular velocity in radians per second. Well, re recall that time in uh, kinematics was displacement over velocity. Well, time, or in this case, t, is going to be our delta theta over our angular velocity. 
All right. Well, our time or our period, it's a period for what? It's so the period for the object to go around one time, and that is be displaced um, all the way around. So how many radians has it been displaced? It's going to be two pi radians, right? All the way around the edge. Sorry. All the way around the edge of that, uh, of that circle is two pi radians right there. And we want to divide that by the number of radians per second. That'll give us <coughs> our answer in seconds. So 2 pi radians um, divided by radians per second, 4.7 radians per second. And a denominator in the denominator becomes a numerator. That is, it becomes a, an answer in seconds. And this will give us our time. So 2 pi divided by 4.7, I get 1.7. Three seconds, and that's our final answer. Final answer. That's our period. It's our time for the object to be displaced a whole two pi radians around the edge of a circle. That is to undergo one full revolution. All right. So that's how we find time. That's one of the ways that we can find time uh, that relates to displacement around the edge of a circle and to angular velocity. So there you have it. That's time. That's going to be the it for this segment. Thanks for following along. Please make sure you ask me if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the next one.